the college football experience ULM Warhawks 2023 season preview episode on the Sports Gambling Podcast Networks brought to you by Circa Sports. Yes, Circa Sports is back with their Circa Survivor and their Circa Millions contest. $14 million are up for grabs. Get all the details at circusports.com. And remember, as always, folks, to let it ride. Hey, this is Derek Stevens. I'm the owner of Circa Las Vegas. You're listening to FGPN. Let it ride. Warhawk season preview. I'm excited to talk a little war child football because I mean, look, Terry Bowden, he's done it before. Be patient with Terry Bowden. I'm excited to talk about Bowden. As, pa- as Patty C says, never fade a Bowden in a big game. Great line. Uh, great line. And remember, he locked them up two years ago. Now they lose Rich Rod this past year. And you, well, 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 I'm getting ahead of myself. Perhaps you're wondering just who the hell you're listening to. My name is Kobe Swinging Dead to Base Dead, aka Pick Don D. That's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under, where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists, and lives by his wits. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. I'm probably drinking too much and celebrating too much and not sleeping. I would have killed a normal man, but. Uh, now that's gone. The medical advice I got from that was was like being hit by lightning. Pretend it never happened and get on with your life. And you're nothing but a chameleon, lemon-headed, coward, terrorist pussy. And I'm after you, buddy. You're going to pay for it. Good night. You're going to pay for it, says Terry Bowden. Good night. Because, look, everyone's thinking he's old. He's lost his ways. I beg to differ, baby. Let's go. I am joy. By my co-host, Sunbelt Specialist. This is his forte. He just he stays just going to Sunbelt, watching st- Sunbelt. He's just uh, he's a Sunbelt Specialist. You know, give it up for the rooftop IPA drinking, home brew making, tobacco road living, the free life giving. Farmer, farmer, earned the basketball league MVP. Give it up, Renzi Nick, in the place to be. There we go. I do love me some Sunbelt. Let's do this. I mean. I'll play that music. I'll play that music. This is a team that uh, uh, reigning former, not reigning former, former national champion back in 1987. Stan Humphreys. Well, yeah, well, you, this is the house that Stan Humphreys built. He won a Super Bowl. He won a Super Bowl with the Washington Redskins. He played in another Super Bowl when Steve Young threw for 7,000 yards in 95. <laughs> like 55 uh, to 7 or something. Yeah, yeah. score. Jerry Rice had 35 touchdowns that game. Where 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 it is is that uh, him and John Taylor combined for 40 touchdowns that game. But uh, both of those we- guys are from small schools, though, and ULM is a small school. Maybe they got a Jerry Rice or a John Taylor on their roster this year. That's I like what you're doing there. I like what you're doing there because and and let me bring up something here. You know because. I think people say, well, you know, Terry Bowden, he's old, he's long in the tooth. But if you dive into his, his history, this guy's a winner. Just like his father was, he won, he won a national championship at Auburn 11 and 0 and 93. I know they can't claim it. Well, that's a bunch of bullshit. They won the national championship, right? We're claiming um, it. Yeah. I'm claiming it. Auburn, feel free to Terry Bowden, feel free to contact me. <laughs> um, but uh, look, I mean, everywhere this guy, he, he had great success at Samford, took him to two, uh, 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 what did one double a playoff appearances back in the day. He won at Salem even prior to that. But then after that, Auburn 47 and 17 at Auburn, then he goes to North Alabama, 29 and nine in the D two ranks with the lions in North Alabama. And then Akron. And and by the way, Akron, it took him to year four. He was one and 11 in year one at Akron. Then five and seven. Then you repeated that again with another five and seven. Then you're four, eight and five. 
Uh, this is a guy that played. He should have never got fired from Akron. He 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 got fired a year after being in the in the MAC championship at Akron. Somebody figured that out for me. Uh, but now at ULM, he's been four and eight in two seasons. Obviously, he had Rich Rod as the OC year one. He bounces out the Jacksonville State last year, and uh, you know they actually improved their conference record. They're three and five as opposed to two and six. NC Nick, should ULM fans be a little optimistic? Uh, let's not forget he inherited a team that went zero and ten in two thousand twenty during the COVID year. So the cupboard was bare. The question is, can he get over the hump? He's yeah, he's he's improved it. He's improved the talent right away. Four and eight, two four and eight seasons. Can he make the next step? That's tough. I don't think. I think ULM is one of the toughest places to win in the country. They haven't had a winning season since two thousand twelve. And so, that's, that's that's the question with the Sun Belt is you know Sun Belt is a pretty loaded conference, but it's getting better and better, and it's getting better and better. And you got to wonder is ULM and Texas State lower because I, I I make the case Sun Belt you could argue is the best group of five now. I think I personally I'd probably ro- rate the Mountain West above them, but yeah, I, I think, think they're, so. they're I think they're better than the AAC probably at least for this year. Uh, but the, the, I guess the argument against that would be, is, is anyone as bad in any of those conferences? Well, maybe you could say Nevada, but um, well, the kind Texas, of this, yeah, yeah the, I mean, the thing dragging down the Sun Belt is the bottom of it. Yeah. You know, there's been a, a couple teams, ULM, one of them where there's, you know, they've had some good, Sun Belt's had some very good football teams, but the bottom of the Sun Belt's been a little weak. That's why we need ULM to, to rise up here some, but it is a very tough place to win. If anybody can do it, 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 maybe it's a Bowden. All right. Uh, we're going to talk all about it. Uh, we're going to talk about the transfer portal uh, because yeah, it was, a, it was a bit, played a big role in this, in this, uh, in this off season. So uh, we're going to have to talk about that. We're going to talk about the offense, defense, special teams and two th- heading into 2023. And then uh, we're going to go game by game on the schedule. Hopefully you're watching over at YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. Remember we host the college football experience. We also host the FCS college football experience. Uh, and the college basketball experience and college baseball experience and, and new, new, we got the big 12 experience. We come together as one on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. Uh, but yeah, we're breaking out all 133 teams. So uh, hop on over to, to, uh, to, to YouTube. We do this each and every year. We do this shit for a while. So, uh, youtube.com slash the college experience. Uh, want to tell you folks out there that the ULM Warhawk 2023 season preview episodes brought to you by circus sports. Yes. Circa Sports and Circa Survivor are back. I'm sorry, Circa Millions and Circa Survivor are back. $14 million in guaranteed prizes are up for grabs. Uh, look, Circa Millions, what you do is you just pick uh, five NFL picks, ATS against the spread each and every week. May the best record win when it's all said and done. Circa Survivor, just pick a different money line winner each and every week. Can't pick the same team twice if you ever played in Survivor, so... There's a little bit of strategy to it. Uh, you can enter in Vegas, play from anywhere. Uh, circuit, and, and the SGP crew will be out in, in Vegas the final week of August. So hit us up if you're going to be there. Uh, CircuitSports.com for all the details. Once again, CircuitSports.com. What would you do with $14 million, people? For all the details, check out CircuitSports.com. All right. We are back on the ULM Warhawks preview for 2023. And here we are, you know, you look back at a year ago and yeah, you, you, you just think, you know, eh, I don't want to say they weren't uh complete. Like you look back and say, do you think this team was better than a year ago is the question. NC Nick, do you think it was better than two years ago? Essentially? Uh, yeah. I mean, same record, but they were able to knock off their arch rival, the raging Cajuns. Which, which uh, should give them an extension right there. There you go. Yeah. You know, they had a tough schedule. <laughs> Whenever a team of the Sun Belt plays at Texas and at Alabama, it's like, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. So, I mean, look at 2021. You know, they, they knocked off Liberty that year, too, which was a surprise win, you know. So, Bowden is capable of, of bubbling up and knocking off a team that's, that's unexpected. I would say maybe they were slightly better in, in 22 compared to 21. Yeah, and and look, they beat Georgia State. Uh, they beat uh, they they beat Lafayette or Louisiana Lafayette as you mentioned, and they were in it. Seven point loss to Coastal, 
seven point loss at South Alabama. Uh, they were in, uh, in it, they were just in some games that you were think man, 10 point loss to Southern Miss. They were in that game, but they did get blown out by Arkansas state. That one was a little, I didn't see that one coming, but uh, and if you look at their FBS wins, the three of them, because I'm throwing out the nickels 35 seven, their three FBS win- wins are uh, by a combined seven points. So they yeah. just barely won the games that they, that they were fortunate enough to end up on the winning side. One thing that I note right away though, is last year they got coastal and Georgia state from the East, right? Uh, but once again, they had Texas and Bama. They don't have Texas and Bama. That's a good sign. They do have Texas A and M, uh, but there is no no. Uh, well, and Ole Miss, but still, I, I would Again, say. Yeah, now it's two SEC West teams. It's, <laughs> I mean, it's just as bad because there's not like they're going to win or be competitive in either one. A and M. A and M was struggling with UMass last year. All right, that's true. <laughs> true. <laughs> They did lose the app. They lost to a Sunbelt team a year ago. Uh, but yes, absolutely, absolutely lot better. But this year they draw from the East Appalachian state and Georgia Southern. I would say it's a little worse in my opinion. The tougher you mean, right? Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Um, we're going to get into the schedule and all that good stuff, but let's talk a little bit here about what uh, ULM was able to do in the transfer portal. Well, good and bad because actually, I don't know. I'm curious. We grade this. I'm curious where you would put this because when you lose a starting quarterback like Chandler Rogers to North Texas, it's hard to say you ever win the portal, right? Um, they lost him. They lost uh, Ma- Malik Jackson, who's the starter with Rich Rodriguez in Jacksonville State. So Terry Terry Bowden's friend, a former offensive coordinator for him, doing taking him dirty. his taking a starting running back. Ouch. Uh, you also lost Andrew Henry, the other running back. He headed to, I believe it was New Mexico. Wide receiver Kobe Cavill is in the portal. Uh, cornerback, and this guy, uh, no, well, that's actually what they landed. Hold on. Uh, they lost safety Justin uh, Macias Jr. to uh, Houston Baptist or Houston Christian. Off at the tackle, Anthony Bowers in the portal. Cornerback uh, Kedron Calligan is in the portal. And this one was big here. Quincy Ledette at the defensive line spot going to uh, Texas Tech with the Red Raiders and Joey McGuire. Offensive tackle, uh, Victor Cutler. All right. No, no relation to Jay. Um, he he lands at Ohio State. That's a brutal loss, man. Yeah. That is a brutal, brutal loss. Then linebacker Quay Drake, Portal. Uh, offensive lineman James Bruce, Portal. They haven't landed anywhere. That's why I'm just saying Portal. Tavion Williams, a safety, Portal. Seth Mason, defensive tackle portal. Um, then this one hurts too. Peyton Dunn to the Houston Cougars and Dana Holgerson. That hurts, man. All these ones. Jackson Bailey, linebacker portal. Defensive lineman Anthony Campbell to the Miami Hurricanes. Uh, and I'm hearing it. He's already making an impact there. Uh, Cayman K- Mills at the cornerback spot portal. And linebacker Fitzroy Gardner. What a great name. He is in the portal as well. Now what they landed, um, they went out and they were able to get Lamar safety, Austin Goffney from Lamar, the Cardinals there. Um, they were also able to land Andrew Volmar. This is a good get for them. This guy started at FIU at, at the corner spot. So him coming in, they also got defensive end Donnell Harris, who was a four-star transfer. This is a, this is a home run hit right here from Texas A and M. He's coming in. Another thing is they were able to talk off safety. Tristan uh, Driggers to, to he entered the portal. They were able to talk him back. Um, and then they were able to also talk back uh, Keydrell Lewis at the offensive tackle spot. So in a way those were wins in their own right. But then they also li- added uh, Travell Johnson, a linebacker from the Texas Longhorns as well as uh, Utah state wide receiver, nine, nine Davis. I mean, they lost the portal. As much as I want to say, like maybe this, these kids from a and M and Texas are going to be fine on this defense. At least they're active in bringing in some players, but to, when you lose your quarterback, when you lose two starting offensive linemen to to now power five conferences, and your you running lose, back, yeah, the, the running back I'm not too concerned about because they brought in that running back from Miami, uh, but the two offensive linemen to power five and the two defense linemen to power five, I mean that that just guts the the, the core of your team, you know, like a team is yeah. only as good as their line play, and that that that's a big blow. 
Well, let's see if uh, Terry Bowden is up for the task because they re- do return five offensive starters from a season ago. Five, and uh, look, their offense was 102nd in scoring offense, 103rd in rush offense, 100th in pass offense, charting at 111 overall. It's not great. And uh, look, there, it's not great when you have to break in a new quarterback and Chandler Rogers leaving um, hurts. That's that's something that really hurts. So yeah. Uh, I see they're they're penciled in to go with Gia Wright, is a senior. I know they also brought in Hunter Herring, a Louisiana transfer, I believe. Um, I did uh, do some research on Spring Ball, and it, yeah, it seems like uh, he he if I'm pronouncing it right, Gia. I don't know how to pronounce it right. He I think he is going to be the starter. He got one carry last year and got hurt. Uh, the year before that, he he played a little bit. I think he uh, he got into maybe one or two games, only attempted 20 passes. So he's green. In those 20 passes, he threw two touchdowns but threw two picks. But uh, not a lot of experience at all. But apparently Wright is going to be their guy. Uh, obviously, a lot of question marks because we really haven't seen him play, and, and he hasn't really played for two years now. Yeah, Matt Matt Kubik's got his or got his work cut out for him. Remember, he was the OC prior to Rich Rod. Then he came back. Uh, running backs penciled in to be Thad Franklin, who's who you alluded to earlier from Miami, Florida. They also have Isaiah Woolard, a Ole Miss transfer. So, uh, two two Power Five running backs back there. The question is, how will the line play be? Wide receiver wise, they bring back Tyrone Howell, who was the second team All Sun Belt. Transfer uh, from uh, K State a couple years ago. Yeah, Kansas State transfer from a few years ago, and then uh, Bud Tolbert comes in from Middle Tennessee, um, and and I see they're penciled in, so they're only bringing back one starting wideout. But Alfred Luke penciled in to be the other starter. Maybe Bugs Mortimer, great name, Bugs Mortimer <laughs> at the other wide receiver position, uh, battling, and then Nine Nine Davis from Utah State, you know, in in that mix as well. Breaking in a brand new tight end. I've seen it penciled in as Nolan Quinnen uh, at the at the tight end spot. But uh, offensive line, you're still bringing back three of five. The only problem is, is you lost some some big ones there. But just uh, think of what it could have been. It could have been yeah. five out of five, and and it could have been arguably one of the best lines in the Sun Belt, or at least the Sun Belt West. But hear me out here, because their left tackle Stacy Wilkins, who's who was not a returning starter, he comes in from Oklahoma, right? And they also have Austin Wainer, a guy that Kansas State transfer. And look, Kansas State produces good offensive linemen. So uh, maybe they'll be better than what we think. Um, what do you make of the whole offense? So breaking in a new kicker might I add too. A lot of question marks. I mean, I, I do think Tyrone Howe is probably one of the the more unheralded receivers in the country. I, he's one of the best guy uh, wideouts in the whole Sun Belt, but most people haven't heard of him probably because. Most people don't watch a whole lot of ULM, um, but there's there's enough question marks here to to wonder if they're going to be much better than they were a season ago. Well, on the defensive side of the ball, uh, they weren't very good either. 121st in scoring defense. Um, that's that's just it. It, it was his first year. Vic Coning running the defense. Um, now enters year two. So maybe there's, maybe that is encouraging 114th in rush defense, 77th in pass defense charting at one Oh nine overall, uh, the defensive side of the ball, uh, returns five starters, just like the offense. And you look at the defensive line. They only returned one in a sophomore defensive end Kennard Snyder. Um, that's a little cons- again, what it could have been if they didn't lose players in the portal to what Miami and Texas tech. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, it, man, it, it hurts. It does hurt, but they, they did bring in this kid, uh, Aiden Huntington from Kent state. Maybe this guy can have a good season. Uh, linebacker wise, they're bringing back the Rove linebacker and Tristan Driggers. Uh, besides that it's, it's plug and play here. I feel if, like you're bringing if in, I'm, if I'm doing my math here, the front seven only brings back two. Yes. Uh, not, so it's not a great sign. If anything, I am kind of excited about the secondary with Deuce Mayberry, uh, the former Kansas Jayhawk, AJ Watts, and then bringing in uh, also Tillery's back as well, but also bringing in the kid from FIU, the airport. Um, the secondary might be decent. Definitely the best unit on that side 
of the ball. But I mean, look, last year ULM was last in the Sun Belt in defense, last in sacks. It looks like the pass rush could be even worse. You know, maybe this this edge rusher from A and M helps, uh, but uh, the secondary is the only thing holding this unit together. Oh man! And like I said, they're breaking in a brand new kicker, right? Brand new kicker, brand new punter. Oh, Over, no, so what, uh, overall, 10 returning starters. They are 122nd in the nation in returning experience, 12th in the Sun Belt. Not great. Not great for your third year. But I'm going to make a case that, uh, yeah, I, I actually think the road schedule is easier this year. Yes, from the Power Five. Well, let's dive in. Well, we're going to dive into the schedule and talk about this. Hopefully, you're watching on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. Uh, folks, before we, we go game by game on the Warhawk schedule, I want to tell you uh, that the college football experience is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Look, we're uh, Underdog Fantasy, absolutely fantastic. We've been with them for years. Their best ball mania is here. And Underdog's given away $15 million in prizes. Underdog Pick'em is also a great way to get down on your favorite MLB and NFL season player props. And when the season starts, they have the weekly college football props that are fucking great. I've been mentioning these the past couple of years. ULM, the Sun Belt plays a lot of weekday games. And they offer they offer these cool player props that you really can't get anywhere else. You got to check them out. Uh, there's so many ways to win over at underdog and underdogs available in so, so many different States head on over to underdogfantasy.com. Use that promo code SGPN for hundred percent deposit bonus up to a hundred dollars. Once again, that's underdogfantasy.com promo code S G P N. All right, folks, we are back on the college football experience. And look, if you're watching on YouTube, shout out to Cam Kerr, our graphics guy, but the win total is only three and a half. Wait a second. NC Nick, you're telling me year three Bowden. I already want to say I'm going to take the over here because he's won with four games the past two years. And I think year three, the program is going to be in a much better place than it was year one or two. That only makes sense on paper. Yeah. I mean, just at first glance, you have to favor an over, right? Well, I mean, look, I, I rattled off all of his years and with the exception of the North Alabama run where year one, he went 11 and two, and then year two, nine and four, and then year three, nine and three. Every other year, his teams have gotten better for the most right. part in you go, you know, you go back to Samford by the time it was uh, his. Yeah. I mean, I feel like by, by the time he gets it going, I, Akron is comparable to ULM in my opinion, sure. F both FBS schools, very hard to win there. Right. One and 11 year one, then five and seven, then five and seven, then eight and four, five. And he never, if anything, he never hit that, that rock bottom again. So right. Um, I'm just inclined without diving into the schedule to think over is a smash here. Yeah, no, I agree. And then you look at the schedule and then you're like, uh, uh, well, you're like, Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe not a smash anymore because it is a tough schedule. I mean, just like I said, that a way at two sec teams at a conference, chalk those up as losses. So in, in those 10 games, now you have to go four and six. Well, let, okay. But I think they're if they were going to ever beat an FBS, me and you watched them beat Arkansas when they were ranked, right? Yeah. 10 years ago or something, yeah. right? I would rather be at AM and Ole Miss than Texas and Bama. Yes. Now, fair. I agree that highly unlikely, but you never know. They play the games for a reason. But right. I can tell you this the NCAA rules might be helping their over because Army is not able to run the wishbone anymore because they have to run out of the gun because of their blocking, uh, because of the new blocking rules, which are fucking ridiculous. Might I add, and the NCA should reverse this ruling going into next year because Paul Johnson's a hundred percent correct that this game is, it has nothing to do with player safety. This is just a crack of shit. But anyway, you gotta love that first game considering, right? For sure. Uh, you know, and um, these two teams have played twice ever, but those were recent games. Last year, Army won 48-24, uh, and in 2020, Army won 37-7, to both games in West Point. Finally, we get a game in the Dirty South in Monroe, and it is week one, which means the Warhawks have all offseason to prepare for I guess the whatever question is, version. what are they preparing for? <laughs> <laughs> right. That's, yeah. That's a good, good point. They might not know what to expect. 
I kind of want to give winnable it, game. I kind of yeah. want to give it to ULM. NFL Network is going to be airing this game, by the way, folks. Um, Perhaps Army wouldn't be as affected by this as other teams, but, you know, Monroe, Louisiana on September 2nd. It's going to be hot. It's going to be hot. <laughs> it's gonna hot be very, like that Louisiana hot sauce, all right? Uh, it's not like, going to be like upstate New York. The, I'll join the, you. I'll okay, join let's you. do it, man. Let's give let's you go. a win. Let's go. Want to know? That game's going to be on NFL Network, by the way. Nationally televised, folks. If Well, I'm assuming NFL Network's national. Uh, then week two, the Lamar Cardinals. They got rid of our guy. Our guy, uh, Bo, uh, Blaine Morgan, was the head coach. He's gone. So brand new era. Great time to catch a brand new head coach in September. I got ULM 2-0. Oh. Give me the over. All right, I don't want to look at the rest of the schedule. All right, are you kidding me? You might me? want to. You might want to. Yeah. Don't, get, don't get too far ahead of yourself. <laughs> I also have them at two and zero. Lamar only won one game a, a season ago, uh, but yeah, things are are looking up. And then you look at the upcoming schedule, and you you, you start cringing a little bit. All right, they head down to Kyle Field, College Station, Texas. Great stadium. Been to this place. Great, great fans. Good environment. Jimbo won't be fired by now, but they could get him fired. This could be if Bowden wants to step up and get uh, <laughs> the guy who who uh, used to be his father's assistant fired. <laughs> This would be it. I got this as a loss. Two and one. You do two, I'm sure. Yeah. They get a bye week. Nice bye week, though, because you're going to need it because you're hosting Appalachian State at old Carl Malone's. No, I'm sorry. I would never do that to you. Uh, yeah. C- That's a lot on. of tech, buddy. Yeah. And even with that, I don't know how much she's loved in the state of Louisiana. <laughs> um, uh, no, loss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, App State is clearly the better team, and and you and Monroe might be you know plucky against some of those other Sun Belt West teams that they see every year, but just talent alone, App State wins this. Well, the very next week they're hosting South Alabama, right? Loss, right? Yeah, we're going game by game. That's another loss, right? Now s- Saturday, October fourteenth, which to me, if you're getting Texas State, you want them in September or as close as you can get to September because EJ Kenny, the new, new head coach there in San Marcos, uh, the turnover and everything October 14th, mid season. So you got to hope that he's not getting uh, rallying the troops. It's winnable. This is winnable. It is. I mean, they, they won last year, 31 30 at home. <laughs> so the I was problem, watching that <laughs> the, the problem with the, uh, you know, playing good teams like app state and South Alabama at home is that if you're going to lose to them anyway, you might as well play them on the road and get your more winnable games at home. Like this, this back-to-back road trip that's at Texas State at Georgia Southern. If if those two games are at home, I have them winning at least one. Yeah, on the road is tough. Uh, so look, I say they, I say they get Texas State. I I say so too. Give give me that, give me that right there. All right, and then they head to Paulson Stadium. Shout out to our guy Clay. Who's been doing doing the work? The first down markers there at Paulson Stadium. Uh, they're going to lose this game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Second half of the back-to-back road trip, Georgia Southern's better. Then they're hosting Arkansas State, who beat. No, the we're Tar both at three, right? We need one yeah. more. This is it right here. This is it. They're beating Arkansas State. They lost last year, right? Lost pretty bad last year. Little revenge. Little revenge down in Monroe. Let's go. All right, man. I'm with you. Let's do it. Over. Over and then at Southern Miss, loss, loss. right? Home to Troy, loss. loss. At Ole Miss, Vaughn loss. Hemingway, loss. At Louisiana, we already did that preview, loss. Yeah, so we got him four and eight and getting three. They shouldn't fire him, though. They should not fire him because his history says his fourth year, he tr- traditionally makes a jump. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. And who are you going to replace him with? Um, I think at ULM has to be patient. So I think if you go four and eight, the question is, what if they don't go four and eight? What if they go three and nine, two and 10? I, I, still think, you, I think you give them a fourth year. I think yeah. you give them a fourth year, but and, and unless he goes 0 and 12, you give him a fourth year or one and 11, even maybe yeah, if, you, if you're, if you're yeah. only wins Lamar, then, then the wheels are coming off the bus, you know, but I agree. I think if they go four and eight or maybe even three and nine, I think you keep them and see what year four is. But uh, like we mentioned, it's a tough place to play. Looking at the roster, you don't come away overly impressed. A lot of new faces. Not not a tough place to play. Tough place. 
T- tough oh, place I'm sorry. To coach. Tough place yeah. to win. <laughs> tough place to win as a player or a coach. Yes, thank yeah. you. So, uh, but you know what? I'm with you. Let's go. Let's go with an over here. He continues to, I guess, tread water. Now, let me ask you this: Two years ago, year one, they beat Liberty. Last year, they beat Louisiana. Yeah, these are wins that no one saw ca- coming. We went through this whole schedule and we gave them wins that we thought we saw coming. Right. Who would be that team? To me, I'm going to circle October seventh. I think. Oh. Mm-hmm. I think if they are to get somebody either October 7th or, uh, or November 11th, or maybe it's app because they have the buy, but uh, yeah, one I was going to say games, one, one of those yeah. home games, you know, um, South Alabama and Troy, especially they're, they're more defensive oriented. So they're not going to, you know, blow too many people out. It could be closer than expected. And look, app state lost at Texas state last year. So it's not like they're immune to uh, and and they have a lot of, of roster turnover this year too. So yeah, I think if you're looking at an upset, you're probably looking at one of those three home games. So even if they lose that Army game in the opener, potentially they could, st- somebody they could still get to four and hit that over. If you're basing it off history, I think you got to take it uh, on Terry Bowden's history alone. You got to take the over. And the best thing well, about taking an over, if we've swayed you, is that you're getting plus one thirty five odds. The under is at minus one sixty five. So. People, the market is not expecting Monroe to do things this year. So maybe you, maybe you buck that trend and you go, and you go over, get a little plus juice. Well, plus juice. Uh, I don't think I'll be mentioning this. I know this, this, this team has been on the locks pod before Patty C didn't do it last year, but the year before it was one of his top locks and it hit <laughs> and it hit never fade of Bowden in a big game. Let's go. <laughs> Yes. And it, and it hit, I don't know that you'll be hearing me talk about this in August, but I, I feel like I feel good about the over here. I don't feel uh, that good about it. It's not going to be one of my locks. Yeah, I know. I'm saying I feel like I have to pick this. I feel yeah, like Bowden. Right. I think it's more likely he goes four and eight and five and seven than he does. than he does three and nine. Right. So whatever that means, take it. I say, you know, if you're a ULM fan, bet it because I, 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 I lean that way, but yeah, this will not be on the locks pod folks. Uh, look, before we get out of here, I had a chance to sit down with Michael Barker, AKA college football campus tour for him. Uh, you know, he's been to every single college football stadium. So uh, in the FBS and a lot of the FCS, he's a bit of a legend in my mind. So uh, I had a chance to sit down with him, talk to, and, and I wanted to ask him about his experiences to old Malone stadium. So with no further ado, here is that interview. Joining us on the College Football Experience ULM Warhawks 2023 season preview episode is none other than Michael Barker, aka College Football Campus Tour. You should give him a follow on Twitter at CFP Campus Tour if you're not following him because this guy does amazing work. He's been to every single college football stadium in the FBS. And it's just a great follow because he documents sometimes four, five, six, seven games a week. And uh, just, just check it out. Uh, Michael, I appreciate you hopping on the show and talking a little ULM football in Malone stadium. Yeah. Thank you for having, having me as always Colby. And you know, the Sun Belt is one of my favorite conferences. So uh, excited to preview ULM. Yeah. So look, ULM, obviously Terry Bowden, the coach there, uh, it, as, as Patty C who's not here on this episode says never fade a Bowden in a big game. Uh, I wonder if there's still excitement still, you know, ab- about that hire. I know he's older, but at the same time, you know, I feel like, I feel like, you know, he's a pretty decent head coach and maybe we could see some success with ULM in the future, but tell me about uh, Malone stadium and, and uh, your experiences there and the history of this thing. So uh, Malone Stadium, built in 1978, has a 30,000 seat capacity. Uh, it replaced Brown Stadium, which is now still in use. It's used as a track stadium. Uh, in 1987, they won the FCS National Championship and had Stan Humphreys at quarterback. Stan Humphreys went on to uh, play for the Chargers in Super Bowl 29 versus the 49ers. They moved up to FBS in 1994. And the largest crowd that they've ever had there was a home game versus Baylor in 2012. And they had 31,175 fans at the game. Wow. Yeah, man. I remember them knocking off. So I, I remember I was actually right by Conway, South Carolina. I was in Myrtle beach 
Uh, me and my brother were at a bar when they knocked off uh, the a ranked Arkansas Razorbacks team. It was either John L. Smith or Bobby Petrino coaching that. I think it was might have been John L. Smith, but uh, they were ranked. They had a quarterback named Colton Browning. I, I I love that upset. I love this program. Love rooting for him. Tell me about your experiences to uh, Mal- how many how many times you've been to Malone Stadium. So I've been there, you know, I've been there a couple of times, but once for a game. And one thing first, you know, as a traveler, what I like about this area is you have uh, Monroe, you have uh, ULM, not too far away. You have Ruston, which is l- where Louisiana Tech is. And right in the same vicinity, you have Grambling. So there are three uh, great college football stadiums all within 45 minutes an hour. So you can do a two for one easy. Uh, I went there in 2020, and in 2020, I was getting close to my goal of hitting all 130 stadiums. It was 130 back then. Now it's 133. And there were games being canceled at the last minute because of COVID. And so I needed a ULM game, and I was really worried that it was going to get canceled. But it got played. There was maybe less than 1,000 people there. It was the end of the season plus the COVID restrictions. But it gave me a good opportunity to explore the stadium, go all over the place, I really like in the end zones, they have this um, in the corner of each end zone, there's a concrete, you know, I'm going to call it patio, but that's not what it is. It's just a a place where you can stand and you're literally six or seven feet from the the corner of the end zone. So great viewing angles. Uh, The game I went to, it was a blowout. Louisiana beat them 70 to seven. Uh, Levi Lewis and Elijah Mitchell, they were just a powerhouse then. So they came in and did damage. Uh, I think uh, ULM was depleted a little bit with COVID players as well. So I'm always on the lookout for the next fun belt ULM game. They didn't get one this year, but again, you know, if you can time out a grambling uh, one o'clock game and a ULM six o'clock game, you got a nice two for one there. So looking to try to make that happen during the season. Yeah, man, that's gotta be, that's awesome, man. You'd be able to catch all those stadiums right there in the mix folks. Uh, Yeah. I mean, I, I know they've had tough times lately, but look, yeah, Stan, the Stan Humphreys era. Like I said, I remember Colton Browning knocking off the, the Razorbacks when they were ranked uh, maybe better days are ahead and uh, yeah, I'll be rooting for it. Michael, I appreciate you hopping on the show and folks, like I said, uh, give, give him a follow on Twitter at CFB campus tour. I mean, he, he a lot of times he'll document the history of the stadium history of uh, what, you know, the schools played in prior to that, all this good stuff. So check it out. Uh, it's a must follow in my opinion, Michael, I appreciate you hopping on the show, brother. Absolutely. Thank you for having me again, Colby. Michael Barker, always doing great work, man. And uh, yeah, check them out guys. Uh, I got to get, I got look. I want to get to Malone stadium. All right. I want to support ULM football. And uh, yeah, maybe hopefully they get one of these SEC schools. You notice how the SEC will never play like app state twice. <laughs> it's always, it's always, uh, New Mexico state, uh, yeah, UMass, yeah, the, 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 ULM, yeah, Akron. Sure. Uh, so, but look, Tommy Bowden can do it, baby. He's done it before. He's a winner. His family is full of winners. So <laughs> we're both on the over with ULM folks let's subscribe to the college football experience. Yes. Let's, let's do it. And, uh, I'm curious, where do you have uh, ter- uh, Tommy ba- uh, Terry Bowden? I said Tommy Bowden. Jeez, Terry Bowden finishing in the uh, Sun Belt Coaching Royal Rumble. Uh, you go John Sumrall at uh, Troy. You his, know, you got age is going to probably give him a. You know, it's not going to be beneficial, but uh, he's old school. He's tough. Yeah, Sha- Sean so- Elliott, I think, is probably the one seed. Sean Clark, Sean Elliott. Both uh, of them know. are. I wouldn't want to mess with either. <laughs> you got some raw down there, at Troy. I think those are the are, are the, the 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 favorites. But maybe Bowden, being how old school he is, you can find some plus plus twelve hundred odds on him. Perhaps never fade um, a Bowden in a big brawl. <laughs> there you go, folks. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, I'm excited to watch that game against Army. Let's go. Folks, subscribe to the college football experience. We're both on the over. Get in right now. Let's Patty do C's probably on the over. If you had to guess, would you <laughs> he's say he's on, on the he's over? On, he's on the yeah, over. Yeah, I think he's on the <laughs> over. Uh, look, we're 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 on Twitter at TCE on SGPN. Give us a follow. NC Nick's on Twitter at NC underscore underscore N I C K. I'm on Twitter at the Colby D. Give us a follow. If you can, please hop on over to iTunes. Give us a five star review. Tell me who you have in the Royal Rumble. All right. Uh, so 
Uh, yeah. Uh, subscribe to the, to the channel on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. Cause we talk college football year round here. Uh, and we have like 10 different shows. I feel like now on that network. So check it out and uh, check out the sports gambling podcast. Get the SGPN app. It's free to download in the app store and Google play store. Uh, also come talk ULM football with us in the discord. Really any sport ever. Yeah. It could be a, a game of dice in a, in, a, in a Louisiana alley somewhere. And I feel like we got you covered. Uh, sports gambling podcast.com slash discord. You'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy it. All right, folks. We're both excited to see the progress and to see if Terry Bowden can do this yet again. All right. This is the college football experience. ULM Warhawk style. You better start thinking about yours and we out of here. Know what you're getting, cause the books we written with a game.